Does environmental concern look different if it proceeds from a theistic basis or a secular basis, or uh, is that uh, inconsequential? I, I think it, it doesn't make a difference where you get your morality. Um, I think the Bible very clearly says, love your neighbor. Um, Jesus taught the golden rule. Um, and Jefferson, who what, he, he called himself a Christian. In fact, he called himself a real Christian, underlined in a letter, um, because he said he's a disciple of the doctrines of Jesus. But he went on to cut all the supernatural parts out of his version of the Bible. And he, he created a Bible, and I have a copy of it here. It's called the Jefferson Bible. He called it the life and morals of Jesus of Nazareth. Not God-given, um, but given by Jesus the man. Um, I got it at the Jefferson Memorial for $18. They have the original at uh, the original Jefferson Bible at the Smithsonian Museum of American History. So, so even though you quoted him referring to God that these unalienable rights are given by our creator, he said um, uh, it goes without saying. We hold these truths to be self-evident, okay? So I don't think you have to believe in God to understand that that is the basis for our morality, and everything follows from that. You don't need the entire Bible to tell you how to behave. I mean, the, I look at the Bible as being more like a, a you know, book on electricity and magnetism. You know, everything condenses to Maxwell's equations, and now you can have lots and lots and lots of examples of their application. That's what the Bible is about. So the fundamental, and, and even the Bible says that. And, and I, I'd never read scripture before a group before, but I did write some things down. Um, <laughs> um, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in the word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's Romans 13, nine. So, um, and it says it in more than one place in the Bible. You don't need it. But I, I think that may have overgeneralized because love your neighbor as yourself doesn't say anything about um, remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy. I don't think. And I would guess that not everybody here does that, even the devout Christians. Well, the Sabbath never was a moral commandment. That's why it's different from the others. But to come to the points you're making that the first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your mind, soul, and strength. And I see the problem as essentially this. It is wonderful to have a moral imperative to look after the planet and to do so. And I admire people of all faiths, religions, and everybody else who try to rein in our consumption rates, our greed, and all that kind of thing. I'm entirely with you there. I regard what we do with our bodies, which are part of the physical universe, and our minds as part of that stewardship. And you see, getting rid of the supernatural from Christianity, to my mind, eviscerates it completely. How do you take seriously the morality of a man who claimed to be God, and who claimed to come to die for people's sins and rise again? You see, for me, Mark, Christ came into this world and he made a very interesting claim. He called himself Lord in Greek, kurios, and it means the owner. I believe the owner is going to return. And I've no doubt he'll be very interested in how I stewarded the planet. But I think he'd be much more interested in my relationship with him. Because what is being offered in Christianity is not merely a motivation for a moral imperative. It is a vastly bigger thing. It is the enjoyment, and I've enjoyed it for over 60 years, the enjoyment of a personal relationship with the God who invented the atom of the stars, your mind, and everything else. The God who painted all the colors into the rainbow. The God who gave us relationships and families and love and aesthetic senses and so on. And gave some of us the opportunity to develop those things. 
we're going to meet him again. Now, it's very interesting. I'm very much with you on the biblical view of the planet. Many people have never read this statement in the book of Revelation that goes like this. The time has come for the judgment of the dead and to destroy those who destroy the earth. That's how much God cares for the planet. But I am going to, I believe, and that's where my huge problem with atheism and Dawkins comes. There's no good, there's no evil, there's no justice. If there's no life after death, then in the end, the vast majority who've ever lived on this planet will not get justice because they won't get it in this life and there's no other life to get it in. I believe there is going to be justice and that fact that it's a divine justice ought to make me very careful how I treat you and how I treat the environment. But without that, then morality just evanesces into what we prefer or what the given social mores of the day. So at stake for me is the biggest thing in all of the universe for me. And that is the marvelous gift that God's prepared to give anyone who trusts Christ. And that's a huge thing that we could go into. But of a relationship with him, that pours meaning into life. Because you know from your physics that this earth is a temporary phenomenon. From the biblical perspective, there is going to be a new heavens and a new earth. God loves physics and chemistry. He's not finished with material. That was bad Greek philosophy that finished with material. So that's where I stand on this. It's the big story into which life can fit. Care for the environment is part of it. But that raises the question, is there an owner? And what are we going to say to him when he comes back and says, you were interested in this planet. What about me? What about me?